Caddis Maximus here, this time with a little review of the AD Wrench and Tool Company, known as the Allen Diffenbaugh Tool Company. These are an early set of pliers, over 100 years old, as a matter of fact. Patent pending. The patent was applied for in 1919, or excuse me, 1920, granted in 1921. Claim to fame is that these are a self-adjusting semi-binding. What I mean by that is we compare to things like the channel lock nut busters or even a traditional pipe wrench. Both of these types of tools are also, well, they're not self-adjusting, but they are self-binding. The harder you use them or press on them, the tighter they grip. That's the idea with these. Is These you get onto a, they're a little funky. Company's not, <laughs> definitely isn't around anymore. Hard to find any history. Even the famous Alloy Artifacts website doesn't have much information on these. Although another YouTuber known for Vintage Tools, Scout Crafter, did do a video on these. But this is the idea. is that You'll have them open. You'll get onto a faster. And you, as you grip, the jaw comes down. And then the more that you press on this jaw, the more it tries to kind of slide forward to put constant pressure on there. That's why they have this can't slip on them however this design just isn't quite as effective as these other designs mainly because the pressure that you're putting on we have a wedge here that's formed and actually on the back side of this jaw is the other support i mean they're compact and strong pliers i really like them but as far as self-binding once you get onto a fastener when you press on the we'll call it the sliding jaw the force that you're applying is trying to go down through this wedge and there's just a lot of friction and it's just not applying quite as much force as say channel lock nut busters get these in the right position where these are rolling over a pivot so when you put these on a, a fastener into these and you start turning as you turn it's going to want to try to drive this jaw further into the closed position and when it does that it puts ever increasing amounts of pressure onto the fastener via that curve. And that's why these are nut busters, because the harder you press, the more it rolls in and these teeth just bite into the fastener. And then of course, a pipe wrench works. They're not auto adjusting, but when you get it onto a fastener and you start applying force, this jaw rocks forward or the upper jaw, or I should say in relation to the upper jaw, providing a nice tight bite and the harder you press, the more this is crushing into the pipe or whatever you're using. You can certainly use pipe wrenches on fasteners. People do, and they choose the devil out of them. But nonetheless, this is also a very um, effective design for staying on fasteners. But what neither of these do is have a nice convenient way for you Excuse me. open it up, get onto something, and then just grip the plier and it just cinches down. These things would be great for lighter duty service when you know air fittings and assembly work, etc. One thing I was gonna point out as compared to these channel locks, they're a little bit shorter. The ergonomics are unreal in a good way. Never really encountered pliers, just the way these two handles have this nice wide area, this beautiful curvature. They are absolutely, some of them, it's just incredibly comfortable to use, but very compact. About the same thickness. I mean, these are made out of some pretty tough steel here. Real simple because they can just use a one thick heavy-duty rivet. Rivet looks funny because it's a rivet that has a washer, and then this is splayed out to retain the washer, and it's just a little bit easier. If we look, this was the AD Wrench and Tool Company out Barrowboo, Wisconsin. And sometime between 1920 and 1925, they moved to Chicago. Barrowboo is a very small town, 12,500 people now. And 100 years ago, really small. This is probably the only, <laughs> one of the only manufacturers there at the time. And when you were making hand tools, just like if you want to become a superstar or get in the movies, you move to L.A. A hundred years ago, if you wanted to make it, 
be successful in making tools, you move to Chicago. And that's what they did. Somewhere between 1920 and 25, ended up moving to Chicago. Who knows exactly how many of the or how long they were around after that, but there was another patent applied for in 1933. As far as I know, this company, there were four tools that they came about with. As far as the name, it is Allen Diffenbaugh. That's what the AD stands for. It's not AT. That was some people. It just is hard to read. Anyway, this was the first patent, 1919, granted in 1920, which is his first set of pliers. And then in 1920, applied for another patent, and it was granted in 1921. So the ones of these pliers that I'm showing you that say patent penting are the 1920 versions. So this would be their, his second tool. The third tool is a slightly modified version here, which has like this kind of odd fulcrum and more of an S shape. I really like these. And then the last tool, which was much later, 1931, granted 1932, was this type of eh, cam type, double range, semi self-adjusting pliers. And this was the last patent, the last real information about the Allen Diffenbaugh or Can't Slip. They end up renaming, when they moved to Chicago, they renamed it to the Can't Slip Plier and Tool Company. And I forgot here, 1922, Grant in 1924. And so we have actually both listings, the Baraboo and the Chicago location. So I'm suspecting 1923 is when they actually moved. And I will mention, yes, I did luck out on these. For a set of 100-year-old pliers, I found some that there are, I've seen pictures of these, and I even think the ones that Stoutcrafter got were just pretty heavily rusted and pitted. So the set that I got here is a, quite frankly, a beautiful example. And such an obscure hand tool company that even the famous hand tool history website known as Alloy Artifacts doesn't have anything about this company on them at all which is kind of unfortunate. I was realizing these pliers kind of have some additional functionality, such as this would be their range right here. Oh, and I did want to point out, this was amusing. These big old channel locks and these little can't slip pliers. If we look, they both have about the same range, even though one set's way larger than the other. Of course, these aren't not buster style. But then these have a distinct advantage of being able to turn the jaw 90 degrees like that. And it's a little funky, but you can still grip onto a fastener that is far larger than it's really meant for. And the edge of the jaw will actually grab like that, or you can go a little further out, such as this. And you wouldn't be able to break bolts, but you'd be able to grasp and uh, work some bolts out that are far larger than its normal capacity, which is kind of an interesting aspect. There's also the ability to hook this onto something and then use this to actually pull on stuff. So if you have it here, you can use it as a pulling ob uh, kind of tool. And the reason that I mentioned that is there's lots of lock nuts and lock rings that have a lock nut and there's just a series of slots on the outside of it and so you use you know special wrenches for those but something like this would actually be able to grab and potentially work with some of those known as slotted lock nuts they're often found on machine tools and that type of thing anyway thought these were definitely pretty interesting probably made out of 44,000 series steel chrome and lebedium steel really hard to actually determine exactly when 4140, 4340, chrome and lebedium steels were invented and made widely available. And when 6000 series steels, like 6150, which is the chrome vanadium steel that a lot of people know with tools, is known as 6000 series steels. Bonnie is known for being one of the companies that really popularized using chrome vanadium, but still hard to tell when it was invented. I'm sure that these pliers here, once again, are either carbon steel or chrome molybdenum steel anyway pretty neat set of pliers not really anything like this right now the way these are designed lend themselves to be little four inch ones or you could have gigantic you know 24 inch 
which I think would be kind of cool. I mean, just two simple forging and a rivet, so there's no like, real no excuse for any modern tool manufacturer not to put out some pliers like this. Particularly because I like the fact that you can get in those some really tight spaces. I mean, we're familiar with Cobra pliers and things like wrench pliers. These are actually German-made Nipex knockoffs. But even compared to these, now, of course, the Nipex style is maybe not quite as robust as these, but have definitely proven themselves a huge range of adjustment. But if I wanted to get into a, a similar place here, uh, I'm just not going to be able to because these are closer to 90 degrees. And once again, the jaw width is just way narrower or height. And another comparison, here we have some of the Doyle water, small water pump pliers. But once again, if we wanted to get into a similar space here, I'm not finding a lot of tools in my inventory that actually do quite what these can do. Especially in confined spaces. I mean, that's the big advantage to these. Is even when you're pressing and they can slip a little bit just because of the way this jaw can still end up moving backwards. Still, there's just so many situations where a set of pliers like these would have just been absolutely great. And they actually have kind of a ratcheting function. They're a little funky to use sometimes. But you can turn a bolt, turn a bolt, and all you have to do is maintain a light amount of tension. Or when you're loosening, you do it this way. And that's another huge advantage of them is they're actually really easy to use in a ratcheting fashion. So you can use an open end wrench to break the bolt loose in a tight area. And then you can get in there with these and actually work it out in a reasonable amount of time because you can do this ratcheting action. For how simple this design is, it's actually pretty effective. And it's a shame they're so obscure it's a shame that nobody else is making them. And generally, most manufacturers should be ashamed about the ergonomics because the way these handles feel, this these nice, bright, broad, nicely curved, just unbelievably comfortable. Not to mention carrying these around in your pocket or a tool belt. These just take up barely any space. And interestingly enough, what they've done here is just as a kind of a, I guess a handy thing is they already had the sharp ends of the handle so they sharpened this lower portion so it can be used as you know kind of like a screwdriver I suspect it was to be used as a slot head screwdriver or just a general prying tool so that's the can't slip pliers invented by Alan Diffenbaugh or patented by Alan C. Allen and the Alan Diffenbaugh company pretty darn cool and I'm stoked to have uh, shared them with you I'm actually probably gonna get a lot of use out of these things and the last thing the steel is just really thick they just I mean the way it's designed allows them to throw a lot of metal at it and still be compact I mean I have good confidence about the <laughs> durability of these things I think they're just great anyway thanks for watching